bist. Check, check. Check, check. Check. Check test. Kindly rise for the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Prayer for the Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray away from the way of the truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. This Eucharist is celebrated for the soul of Blanche de Souza, soul of Archie, Margaret, Francis, and Lizzie, soul of Delcy Pereira, Mans Mind Mass.
my dear sisters and brothers, my dear fathers, my dear sisters, just a word of introduction to Papal Nuncio, who is in our midst. You know that he represents the Holy Father in India to the government and also to the church. Holy Father is ours, that's we say, we love him, but at the same time, there are 180 nuncios in the world, all of whom are officially kind of given the responsibility of representing the Pope. And so we have His Excellency Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli. He was uh, born in Bergamo, where Pope John the Twenty-Third also was born in Italy. And uh, he has been in the service of the Holy Father's office uh, almost since uh, July 1987. He was born on the 13th and he entered also the diplomatic service of the Holy Father in 1987. Subsequently, he has held many responsible positions to represent the Pope in various countries. Most of these countries are in Asia. And he came to India in, uh, on the 13th of March, 2021. He goes to many dioceses around India. During the week he works, and you can imagine the work that must be there for him but on weekends, he goes to dioceses, to what we call local churches, so that he is really able to fulfill his responsibility before God, because it is God who appoints, we believe, the Holy Father, successor of Peter, and the Holy Father then who appoints, who has appointed Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli. Today he is in our midst. This is a very official ceremony. He is only here for a day and a half almost. And he's trying to meet as many people as possible. No rest for him because he didn't come for rest. And so now he is here in the cathedral church of our diocese, Our Lady of Grace. I request. His Excellency, to offer this Mass, praying for all our people, all the faithful in the Diocese of Wasai, spread from Naigao up to Gujarat, and spread from Arabian Sea up to territory of Nashik, Nashik Diocese. Your Excellency, ask God through Our Lady of Grace to shower blessings on every family in our diocese. We ask you to pray for those who have gone before us. We ask you to pray our young people, our children, especially those most needy and poor amongst us. To you, Your Excellency. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most gracious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Gloria in excelsis de Glory 
Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. इर्मया संदेष्ठ्याच्या पुस्तकातून घेतलेले वाचन परमेश्वर असे म्हणतो जो इसम मनुष्यावर भिस्त ठेवतो मानवाला आपला बाहू करतो आणि ज्याचे अंतकरण परमेश्वरापासून फिरले आहे तो शापित आहे तो वैरणातल्या झुडपासारखा होईल आणि जे कल्याण होईल ते तो पाहणार नाही अरण्यातील वृक्षस्थळे शारभूमी आणि प्रदेश यात तो वस्ती करील जो पुरुष परमेश्वरावर भाव ठेवतो ज्याचा भाव व विश्व परमेश्वर आहे तो धन्य तो जलाशयाजवळ लावलेल्या वृक्षासारखा होईल तो आपली मुळे नदी किनारी पसरील उन्हाची झळी येते तिला तो भिणार नाही त्याची पाने हिरवी राहतील अवर्षणाच्या वर्षी त्याला चिंता पडणार नाही तो फळे देण्याचे सोडणार नाही हा प्रभूचा शब्द आहे A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If Christ is preached as raised from the dead, 
How can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all men most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Can you rise for the affirmation? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed by their disease. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and reveal you, and cast you out, cast out your name as evil, on the account of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. But O to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. O to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the fall prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ.
Your Grace, Archbishop Felix Machado, Reverend Father John Furgose, Rector of the Cathedral, and my dear fathers, sisters, and brothers in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a great joy for me to be present with you in this historical cathedral of Our Lady of Grace, one of the oldest churches in Vasai, that was elevated to the status of cathedral on 15 August 1998. Your parish, which comprises of 1,660 families and about 6,500 parishioners, has made a notable contribution, especially in the fields of spirituality, education, culture, and pastoral activities. The Saint Gonzalo Garcia College, whose foundation stone was blessed by Saint John Paul II in 1986, Saint Thomas Batista School and Junior College, and two other colleges of education with their focus on spiritual and moral values, have diligently catered to the educational needs of the people. That Catholic population of your diocese, which is over 100,000, 120,000, belongs to the cultural groups of Kuparis, what wise, Ad adivasis, colis, fisher flock, and uh, in the coastal areas and migrant uh, groups from all over India, especially Bombay. It is so nice to know that there is a harmonious understanding among, among these different groups. The main thrust of your diocese has been the education apostolate, catechesis, pastoral activities, the youth apostolate, the media, health services, upliftment of the poor, pastoral care of the various migrant groups, and promotion of the adivasis, tribals, and farmers. The diocesan monthly magazine, Suvarta, in Marathi, in uh, Shantitud, in uh, English, are very formative, giving the official teaching of the church on various matters. Besides, interreligious and ecumenical activities are undertaken on a regular basis. So it is heartening uh, to note that uh, the diocesan Cardinal Gracious Hospital financially helps innumerable poor patients irrespective of caste or religion and also renders free medical services to them. Dear brothers and sisters, the first reading taken from the book of Jeremiah invites us to trust the Lord at all times. The one who trusts in God has roots which go down into the living waters, and they do not fear the draft or any other evil, for they are nurtured and sustained by the Holy Word of God. At the same time, Prophet Jeremiah words that those who do not trust in God will have lives that are like a stunted bush in the wilderness and barren like 
the salt lands. Love, joy, and peace are some of the fruitful blessings that come from trusting in the Lord. A blessed life is one which is planted by the Lord, protected by the Lord, and productive for the Lord. In the Gospel today, we note that Jesus taught the Beatitudes as a part of the Sermon of the Mount, which presents to us a new program of life and is addressed to all humanity. Jesus' proclamation of the Beatitudes demands discipleship and can be understood and lived out only by following Jesus and accompanying him on his journey. Jesus reveals the path to true happiness by calling us to be poor, humble, meek, and merciful. He points out to us how to imitate him and follow him. The Beatitudes, which reveal the face of Jesus, are the way to joy and always bring joy and happiness. That, in reality, the Blessed One par excellence is only Jesus. It is He, in fact, who is truly poor in spirit, afflicted, meek, the one who hungers and thirsts for justice, merciful, pure in heart and a peace worker. It is he who is persecuted in the cause of right. Jesus invites us to live a plain and austere life and to share in the life of those most in need. He explained with great simplicity what it means to be holy men or women when he gave us the Beatitudes. When we become companions on Jesus' way, we live by new standards. In being his few faithful disciples, we reject the world's ambitious of riches, popularity, and material pleasures, and instead pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, as St. Paul urges in the letter to Timothy. The Beatitudes are all about imitating Jesus each day and being his ardent witnesses. Pope Francis explains that the world is changing, not by power and might, but by the Beatitudes. He says that the Beatitudes are like a Christian's identity card. So, if anyone asks, what must one do want to do to be a good Christian? The answer is clear. In the Beatitudes, we find a portrait of the Master, which we are called to reflect in our daily lives. Dear brothers and sisters, May Saint Gonzalo Garcia and Saint Francis Xavier, the patrons of your diocese, inspire each of you to be faithful witnesses of Christ's saving love. 
And finally, I extend the blessing of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, on each and every one of you, assuring you of my prayers, especially in this Holy Mass, and my good wishes to all of you. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. Our response shall be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Felix Machado, all priests and religious, and all the missionaries who go out to preach the love of God at the risk of their own lives, that they may find in God the love and strength that he promises in their vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Prayers. For Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli, Apostolic Nuncio to India and Nepal, that God may continue to bless him abundantly to carry out his mission in our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who hold public offices and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the students who are going back to school, that they may be able to overcome pandemic restrictions and swiftly return to normal well-being, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the faithful, that we rely less on our material well-being and more on the power and might of God, who ultimately comes to our aid in times of difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for our personal needs. May the petitions of your Church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our, our own merits through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have sacrifice at their hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed the Holy Lord, and all you have created the rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the, pow pow the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night of he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection that sends you into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Gonzalo Garcia, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Felix, our Bishop, Archbishop Leopold, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to stand under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, uh, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Before uh, the final blessing, I would like to express my deep gratitude to your Archbishop, Felix Machado, for inviting me to visit your diocese and to, uh, to bring with, among you the presence of the Holy Father, Francis. Strengthen the bonds of unity between uh, the Diocese of Vasai and uh, the Holy Father, the successor of the Apostle, Peter. I am really very happy today to be among you, and uh, I should say that uh, I find uh, a community here, a Catholic community, very much vibrant in your faith. So I encourage you to continue to be good Catholics and also to be also good citizens in your country. And I thank you especially for your uh, devotion and prayers for the Holy Father Francis. He always asks prayers for him, for his ministry, and I'm sure that you are accompanying him with your prayers and your love. Thank you for that. And please uh, pray also for me, for my ministry in uh, your beautiful country of India. And now, on behalf of the Holy Father Francis, I will bless all of you. The Lord be with you. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in his sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is finished. Is ended. Sixth Sunday of the Ordinary Time. Announcements. Today's second collection is for the poor and the needy. Please contribute generously. As a part of preparation for upcoming Synod, an open youth meeting was scheduled for today, which is postponed to coming Sunday, 20th February at 10.30 a.m. in the church hall. All the youth of the parish are expected to participate in this open discussion. Parents are requested to cooperate and encourage your children. In order that all the faithful of our parish may get an opportunity to participate in charismatic prayer, we have organized a zonal level prayer meetings which will begin from 17th of this month. Details will be given to you by the parish council members. Parents kindly note, every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. there are offline Sunday school classes for standards 7th, 8th and 9th. Please encourage your children to attend the classes. Also, every Saturday evening, there are confirmation classes at 6 p.m. in the church hall. Kindly make sure that the children who wish to receive the sacrament of confirmation attend the classes regularly. Last Sunday's collection, rupees 1 lakh, 
18,240. St. Anthony's box collection, rupees 970. Wednesday, Novena collection, rupees 19,020 rupees. We appreciate your generosity and ask the good Lord to bless you and your family. His Excellency, Most Reverend Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli, the Apostolic Nuncio to India and Nepal. His Grace, Most Reverend Archbishop Felix Machado, Shepherd of our Diocese. Father Stephen Fernandez, Father John, all the priests of the Cathedral, religious, and my dear brothers and sisters. Your Excellency, it gives me immense joy to stand here before you on behalf of our shepherd, priests in the cathedral, religious, and especially the parishioners of our cathedral, to express my deepest gratitude to Your Excellency for your esteemed presence in our midst, especially this meaningful and very prayerful celebration of the Holy Eucharist and your words of wisdom. You have told us what is our true identity and the message of hope, especially during this time of pain. May God continue to shower his abundant blessings on you, on your ministry. We assure you of our prayerful support and ask your apostolic blessings on all of us. We also thank Father Stephen Fernandez, who has accompanied His Excellency. I now request our parish priest, Father John Forgos, to felicitate you on behalf of the cathedral with a bouquet, shawl, and a memento. <laughs> 